a ray of light in a particular medium travels in a straight line but when it travels from one medium to another at the medium of separation it uh, deviates from its actual path to see that let us trace the path of a ray of light through a rectangular glass slab to trace the path of a ray of light through a rectangular glass slab we need a rectangular glass slab a sheet of paper scale protractor thumb pins a pen or a pencil so the first step is place the glass slab on the paper and uh, draw its outline the way i have done and i have labeled the vertices as a b c d now we will consider a b as a incident surface so first we should draw the normal we should draw the normal somewhere to the left side of the midpoint of the incident surface so i have marked the point here so here i'm going to draw normal the line n is perpendicular to ab now we have to draw incident ray to the left of the normal keeping this in mind that angle of incidence should be between 30 degrees to 60 degrees angle of incidence can be less than 30 or more than 60 but in that case we have to struggle to see or search the emergent ray so it is advisable that angle of incidence should lie between 30 and 60 so placing the protractor like this from zero on this i am taking angle of incidence somewhere around uh, 35 the line pq is the incident ray and the angle of incidence we have taken it as 35 degrees once we have done so we have to take uh, two thumb pins if possible the same color so the way of holding the thumb pins is hold them like this so that when we punch it it goes perfectly perpendicular to the surface so one of the thumb pin i am placing on the incident ray the other thumb pin has to be placed at a minimum distance of 5 cm now place a glass slab back in place now we have to take another two thumb pins we have to punch the third thumb pin in a straight line with the foot of these two thumb pins but how to see that we have to see the foot of the two thumb pins through the glass slab in this direction not above of course the height of the thumb pins are such that you can't see that from above also so for doing so we have to just go a bit below the table with our eyes on the line or in the line uh with the two thumb pins on the other side so i am i am able to see first i have to focus on the foot of the two thumb pins through the glass slab i'm seeing them perfectly in a straight line keeping that in straight line i have to put the third thumb pin and now i clearly see the three thumb pins in straight line its foot and the foot of those two red thumb pins are perfectly in a straight line now we have to put the fourth thumb pin such that its a tip comes in a straight line with the blue thumb pin and the two red thumb pins as i see through this rectangular glass slab so i have kept my head perfectly at the height of the table with one eye closed first i see the three thumb pins in straight line and then i see this fourth thumb pin perfectly in straight line with those once we have done so pull up one of the thumb pins mark that point and encircle to identify the location pull up the next one mark that point encircle to know the second location now remove all those things that you see here remove this thumb pin and this one also these two points by help of a scale we have to connect to the emergent surface that is cd now this point we have pq call this point as r and uh, this is a ray so this is some s so pq is the incident ray rs is the final emergent ray connect q and r with the help of a scale the second point of incidence we have to draw another normal to get the second angle of incidence and the final angle of emergence the normal n and n prime are parallel to each other if it is so this uh, refracted ray will behave like a transversal and uh, the first angle of refraction r1 the second angle of refraction that is uh, in a way second angle of incidence r1 r2 should be equal because they will behave like alternate interior angles 
the angle between final emergentry and normal this will be called as angle of emergence the first angle of refraction is uh, 23 r2 0 10 20 and you can see it is 23 so r1 and r2 both of them are approximately 23 Angle of emergence, if you observe, see it is 0, 10, 20, 30 and 35. So, this ray of light, instead of going straight, it once deviates from its actual path and once again deviates from its path. If the glass slab was not present, the instant ray should have gone straight in this way. But it has deviated from its actual path. Now, let me mark a point on the emergent ray and draw a perpendicular so that we understand what is the perpendicular distance between the produced incident ray and the emergent ray. So this is the perpendicular distance. Watch till the end of this video so that you understand many conclusions that we get out of this experiment. So the perpendicular distance between the produced incident ray and emergent ray, this is called lateral displacement. Our main objective was to trace the path of a ray of light through a rectangular glass slab. So so this is the path of ray of light as it travels from air to glass to the Now the conclusion time. Uh, the black line is the path of the ray of light as it passes through the rectangular glass slab. Throughout we will find that angle of incidence and angle of emergence are same. While performing some experiment minimum 3 readings have to be taken. More than 3 readings is always welcome. So for 35 degrees angle of incidence we got angle of emergence 35. I have performed this experiment for angle of incidence 40. Here also I and E are same. And also uh, I have performed the experiment for angle of incidence 50. Here also angle of incidence, angle of emergence are same. That means while tracing the path of a ray of light through a rectangular glass slab, always angle of incidence and angle of emergence are same. That indicates that incident ray and emergent ray are always a parallel. Because in a way alternate exterior angles are equal so lines are parallel. If not that we can produce the incident ray. The produced incident ray and emergent ray. This will be equispaced throughout. That means if you draw perpendiculars all the perpendiculars distance will be same. So that also indicates that the incident ray and emergent ray are parallel lines. The perpendicular distance between the produced instant ray and emergent ray that is called lateral displacement. This lateral displacement depends upon certain factors. First factor is the angle of incidence itself. For 35 some angle of incidence I can measure with scale and I can show you if you can see it is something uh, more than a unit uh, 1.3 something. Now for uh, the experiment that was done for 40 the this is this is a bit more a unit more because 35 40 is not very far for 50 the lateral displacement is uh, you see two units so this is one conclusion that lateral displacement depends upon angle of incidence as we increase angle of incidence lateral displacement also increases so lateral displacement is a directly proportional to the angle of incidence Lateral displacement also depends upon the thickness of the glass slab. This is called thickness of glass slab. That means uh, through this length uh, the ray of light has to travel. So if this gap is more, lateral displacement also becomes more. If this gap is less, means the thickness of glass slab is less, the lateral displacement also reduces. Thickness means this, not this. Because the ray of light travels like this. No? For ray of light, this is the thickness. So lateral displacement depends upon thickness. Lateral displacement also depends upon the material medium. Means refractive index of the glass. More refractive index, then this ray bends much towards the normal and finally much away from normal. So if uh, the rectangular glass slab's refractive index is more, lateral displacement is going to be more. And also lateral displacement depends upon the wavelength of the incident light. So this is how we perform the experiment. And uh, two conclusions. One, angle of incidence, angle of emergence are same. Lateral displacement is the perpendicular distance between produced incident ray and emergent ray. 
that depends upon thickness of glass slab depends upon angle of incidence depends upon the refractive index of the material medium through which light ray is passing also it depends upon the wavelength of incident light two uh, precautions while doing this experiment is one angle of incidence should be between 30 degrees to 60 degrees so accordingly i have performed the experiment 35 40 and 50 and the distance between minimum distance between the two ball pins should be 5 cm thank you for watching this video